Hi, Dennis Weiss for Why Like Ike, and we have a great story for you here in the month of February, which is Valentine's Day kind of the month, right? Absolutely. We have William Snyder, and we have Pam Sanfilippo, and you're an archivist. I'm the education specialist. You're an education <laughs> specialist, okay. But you bring stuff, so you're my archivist today. <laughs> And William is the curator of the museum here, and we're here in Valentine's Day month to talk about Ike and Mamie, not President, not First Lady, but Ike and Mamie's story. Cool story. Cool story. Um, yes, they met when they were uh, 20 and 26, well, actually 19 and 25 years old. They were okay. you know, six years apart. Um, and after Ike graduated from West Point, his first duty station was at Fort Sam Houston in San Antonio, Texas. And Mamie was from a fairly well-to-do family that lived in Denver, and they escaped the cold winters in Denver by going to San Antonio for oh. the winter. And they were introduced through mutual friends. Okay, I've, I've never really knew that part of the story. I knew where they were from, but I didn't know how they met. So they met in uh, snowbirding in San Antonio. Huh? Yes, that's right. And uh, there's a, a great story about how they met. Uh, Mamie's dance card was full for six weeks, as they used to say back in those days. So she wasn't available to go out with a young gentleman until about six weeks after they first met. So um, Ike being Ike uh, played it very cool and uh, kept dropping by uh, the family home. And so by the time he and Mamie actually got to go out on their first date, he was really good friends with uh, her mother and her sisters. They just adored him. Yeah, that's a terrific story. Uh, looking at the picture behind me, I can see why her dance card might have been full. Yes, she was a very attractive young lady, mm -hmm. and uh, you know, certainly from a, a very well-to-do family. And uh, you know, so she had plenty of prospects, as they might have said in those days. Uh, but uh, Mamie wasn't having any of the uh, social gentlemen, young gentlemen, uh, that were in her circle very much. And uh, supposedly there's a great quote from Mamie that after she met Ike, she said, at last here is a real man. I am so tired of those lounge lizards with the patent leather hair. <laughs> <laughs> I couldn't agree more. <laughs> All right, that, that is a cool story. So mm -hmm. I, I had never heard that. Okay, we, what artifacts do we have and what, are we, what, what light do they shed on the Ike and Mamie story? Well, we have a, a picture here of the Denver home that uh, okay. Mamie grew up in, and also a picture of her at about the time of her high school graduation. She attended a finishing school for young ladies, so um, knew all of the proper etiquette of the, the period, making her an ideal uh, spouse for Ike as he would move up in the ranks of the Army. A very attractive uh, young woman, and uh, it was basically a whirlwind romance from the time they, they met um, in October of 1915, and then they uh, graduate, or they uh, became engaged on Valentine's Day in 1916. I so. didn't know that. Mm -hmm. On Valentine's Day? On Valentine's Day. Day. Well, yeah. this is a Valentine's story. Mm -hmm. um, so. I'll bet I gave her flowers because he wanted to then. Probably, not because he had to. <laughs> there you go, there you go. And uh, the engagement. Yes, um, we're very fortunate. Um, Ike originally gave Mamie his own West Point class ring. Okay, and, um, I saw that. As sort of a you know promise ring, kind of like you yeah. know, folks still do today. But here is uh, her engagement ring that he had made. It is a slightly smaller version of a West Point oh. ring, and this was her first engagement ring. Really? Yes. So it, it, it is based on a West Point ring. It's just a little bit smaller. Well, I guess when you marry a, a person whose career military, you kind of marry the military as well, right? Pr fitting, pretty much. Fitting ring? Pretty much. Exactly. Mm -hmm. yeah. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. and she uh, wrote a letter to her aunt and uncle shortly after the engagement uh, telling them that she was engaged, and she actually describes the ring to them uh, that she had received her, as her first one. Um, and then she says uh, she received her solitaire, which was set in platinum with a lot of filigree work. Um, also three small cut diamonds on either side of the large stone. It's a gorgeous engagement ring. So she kind of had two engagement rings. Is that on display at the library from time to time, William? Uh, no, that still belongs to the family. It does, okay. Mm -hmm. Yes. Someday. Well, let's hope so. Yeah, someday, <laughs> someday. Mm -hmm. um, you know, on the wall behind us are some pictures of, of some very good-looking young people mm -hmm. who, um, who grew 
uh, and excelled in everything they did. And it's the Ike and Mamie story, not just the Ike story today. That's right, right. William? That's right. Yeah. Um, and the one photograph behind me is Ike playing football at West Point, which he loved to do until he, um, you know, blew out his knee, unfortunately. But one of the other um, pieces that we have here is he gave Ike and Mamie, or he gave Mamie a little football charm um, that lists the scores of the 1913 and 1914 Army, Army and Navy, Navy football game. games that he would have been coaching no the team kidding. for. So wow. uh, hopefully Dave That's can get a close-up cool. shot Ooh. of that okay. later. We'll but it's a, a great, it's a great little charm. Yeah. That's pretty interesting. I didn't. I saw it on the table, but I didn't look at it close enough to see. It has the score of the Army Navy game, which was very important. That's right, because uh, Army won both games. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so give me some insight into Mamie's life from her engagement uh, over the next couple of years. What do you think? Well, um, they had initially wanted to wait for their wedding until after she turned 20 in uh, November of 1916. And then she thought maybe, uh, based on Ike's uh, duty station, it, it might even be delayed longer. But as it turned out, they ended up moving things up and were married in July of 1916. So mm -hmm. this year will also be uh, the 100th anniversary of their wedding as wow. well. Another um, thing to celebrate at the Eisenhower Presidential mm -hmm. Library and Museum. Right. And again, she thought that, or her father thought that she wouldn't do very well as the wife of a young uh, career officer in the military, but um, she learned very quickly in the skills she had developed as a young lady, um, came into play, kind of learning the uh, protocol and order of uh, military. Uh, uh, several of the officers who served as mentors for Ike, their spouses served mm -hmm. as mentors for Mamie as well. I think that's the way it still works with mm -hmm. uh, military families. Uh, the, the people who've been there a while, both men and women, uh, help the others, mentor them along. It's just, it, there's a whole set of duties and, and, and difficulties mm -hmm. that come along with being married to an Army career. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, and to go back to the photographs behind us, the large one directly behind us of the two of them, that was their engagement uh, photograph. Stunning photograph. Yes, absolutely. Um, Ike in his dress whites and Mamie in a gown very similar to her wedding dress. And the final uh, portrait of Mamie behind you um, is a portrait of her in her wedding dress, which we do have on, on permanent display in the museum. A question, what did Mamie's family do in Denver? Either of you know? Her father had made his fortune in the meatpacking industry okay. in Iowa, All right. and then they had moved to, okay. and so it was kind of in semi-retirement is I see. my understanding. Right. Uh, yes, he got to retire at the ripe old age of 38. Really? So, yes, uh, they did very well in the meatpacking <laughs> business in Iowa. Well. Uh, and, and they moved to Denver because, uh, you know, Mamie was one of four daughters, and she and one of her sisters had um, health conditions that, at the time, the clear mountain air of Denver they thought would be good for them. So there, that was the move. There to were a lot of people who moved west for clear mountain air mm -hmm. um, or clear dry air in exactly. Arizona. Exactly. And that sort of a thing. That's interesting. Mm -hmm. Didn't know any of that. Mm -hmm. Last name is Dowd, right? Dowd. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's correct. Um, and the Dowd family home was actually where they had their wedding ceremony oh. at July 1st, 1916. So. Very cool. Mm -hmm. Very cool. Yeah. Where did they go after, after they had been married? Do either of you know? Uh, well, uh, Ike was still at San Antonio for a mm -hmm. couple of more years. Okay. Um, and then, of course, they just started moving around wherever he was Went posted. Went all over the world was. and ended up right back here in Abilene, Kansas. Yes, uh, yes, permanently so. Permanently so, mm -hmm. yes. Very interesting. You know, we talk about uh, President Eisenhower and General Eisenhower a lot on the camera. Mm -hmm. uh, we don't often talk about Mamie. And uh, from what was the date of their wedding? July 1st. July 1st year? 1916. 1916. Um, they were truly one uh, man and wife. And, uh, you know, Mamie had her own um, side of everything that general and then later President Eisenhower did for our country. Very significant mm -hmm. as a first lady. Mm -hmm. Yes, she certainly did. Um, and one of the um, his duty stations was in Panama with General Fox Connor in the um, early 20s. And 
Um, Mamie did not care for that. She was not a fan of the hot, humid air mm -hmm. uh, and conditions. But well, it ruins your gowns. <laughs> well, well, of course you get <laughs> course you know, you know, wrinkles. Right. Um, exactly. But uh, one of the things, <clears throat> excuse me, she did there with Mrs. Connor as we were talking about how uh, the wives sort of have their own uh, ranking order. Um, they set up a hospital for women and children there on the base in Panama. That was something that uh, health care was completely lacking for mm -hmm. women and children on the military That's bases. That's interesting. I didn't know that either. Mm -hmm. You guys are just full of things I didn't <laughs> know today. That's interesting. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so, you know, we often, I think, think of Mamie as, a, you know, the first lady or, you know, the hostess at the White House, but she was extremely active throughout her life, um, mainly with health care issues and uh, the welfare of children. Hmm. Interesting. Interesting. Mm -hmm. Well, let's do a show one of these days uh, where you can have some time to dig some of that archiv archival material out, <laughs> and let's take a look at that. That's fascinating. Okay. We, I, we can do that. I, if I had no idea, most of those people have no idea either. Mm -hmm. Okay. So what else about young uh, Ike and Mamie can well, you present for us um, today? She basically said her career was Ike. and. Um, on the day that they got married, he also received his uh, first promotion to first lieutenant, and that was going to be kind of the pattern mm -hmm. of their lives. Um, and we do think of them as these very public figures uh, once he, he reaches fame during World War II, but um, in facing the, the challenges and the joys of, of that, but they also face some per personal challenges and joys as well. They're, uh, first son was born um, in 1917, about a year after they got married, um, but he unfortunately um, contracted uh, diphtheria and mm -hmm. passed away, uh, or no, I'm sorry, scarlet, fever. scarlet fever. Scarlet fever. I was fever. getting them too mixed up. The whole stuff. range of diseases we don't have to talk about too much today, mm -hmm. but we're very real and a risk mm -hmm. to uh, people then. Mm -hmm. And uh, that's... Um, Dowd Dwight was his name, the photograph there, um, and he was affectionately nicknamed Icky uh, by Grandmother Dowd. <laughs> Not sure why, except maybe it was short for <laughs> Little Ike, but it came out Icky for some reason, and I, <laughs> that's unfortunate. Uh, but that's a, that's a photograph of Little Icky and his baby cup that we're fortunate enough yeah. to have in the collection. That's an interesting photograph. Very period photograph. Very period mm -hmm. photograph, absolutely. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. um, and then their second son, John, was born uh, a little over a year after uh, Icky passed away. I see. Yeah. Um, you know, you, you think about Eisenhower as a, as a president, and, and we talk about it uh, on camera quite a lot, but he presided over such a change in America. Um, you know, from uh, when World War II started, uh, there, there was more than one army pulling artillery with horses. Um, to 1961 when he gave his farewell address and uh, just a few years later we put a man on a moon. Mm -hmm. Yeah, mm -hmm. what a, that's, that's change. From horses to men on moon, mm -hmm. that's a lot of change. It, it certainly is and, and Ike was really in there in a lot of those changes. Uh, maybe not leading the charge but he was certainly right at the very beginning. Um, you know, from the famous military 1919 cross-country convoy mm -hmm. um, where we discovered how horrible the roads were in this country, <laughs> um, which might, you know, have led a little bit to the interstate highway system yeah, perhaps a few, few years, you know, to, do with it, right? uh, you know um, to when he was uh, commander of the tank corps mm -hmm. at, at Camp Meade and uh, how he and where he met his good friend, uh, later General Patton, um, there at the camp. And they, were, they pushed so hard as, you know, for the tank to be the replacement to the horse. Yeah. So, as you prepared for this, Pam, what's the most interesting thing about Mamie that came to your view? Oh, um, I would say uh, everything that I was reading talked about how uh, friendly she was. And she said herself she wanted to be remembered as a friend. Um, no, even if she was shaking 300 or 3,000 hands a day mm -hmm. um, of people coming through the, the White House, she would take the time to find out at their name or where they were from and make some personal mm -hmm. connection with them and make them feel special. And I think mm -hmm. that uh, is a testament to her, her role as well. Hospitality is a gift mm -hmm. and it's a great valued gift mm -hmm. in relationships with people. So what we have learned uh, today that there 
in the in the the people managing business in the Eisenhower family, there were two experts. Mm -hmm. That's right. Mm -hmm. Both Ike and Mamie uh, were very good with people, and and eight years of peace and prosperity was also eight years of uh, personal peace and prosperity at home as well, mm. with them and their family, of of growing a relationship to represent the free world. Uh, what a challenge! What a what a what an incredible accomplishment, and, and Mamie shared in all of that. And in, in many ways led the, the charge and the hospitality. Uh, I like to say that uh, the Eisenhowers became the most entertaining first family up to that point in time, and um, not just because they were fun, but they were, uh, but because they held the most uh, dinners and functions at the White House than any president or first family up to that point in time. Mm -hmm. And Mamie really saw her role as an extension of Ike's, and it was that personal diplomacy and whether you're mm -hmm. shaking 3,000 hands a day or you know, you're having a private dinner with another head of state, it's, it's something that Mamie took very seriously. I don't believe that it's possible to uh, fake uh, hospitality or, or warmth if you genuinely don't hold a like for people. And uh, what a benefit to her husband's administration that she was so gifted mm -hmm. in that area and, and had a desire and ability to make people feel welcome to the people's house. And one of uh, his speech writers, uh, I think it was Kevin McCann, actually said that if it, uh, Eisenhower would have been Colonel Dwight D. Eisenhower <laughs> if it wasn't for Mamie. That's, that's funny. Uh, wouldn't that be a great story? Wouldn't mm -hmm. that be a great story? I have no reason to doubt it, do you? Uh, no, not a bit. Any, any partnership, um, sometimes there's somebody out front, but uh, without the somebody behind or the, to the side or when the camera's off out front, mm -hmm. uh, that, that partnership does not prosper and that organization doesn't grow. Mm -hmm. So, you know, we're blessed to be on camera today, the three mm -hmm. of us. Uh, I represent Eagle, you represent the Eisenhower Presidential Library and Museum. There's a bunch of other Eagles and there's a bunch of other Eisenhower people who make this world go around. We just get to be in front of the camera now. That's right. You know, I hear that there's a chance that we'll put Samantha in my chair <laughs> next time. And she has a communication director, you know, to give us her expertise. I thought the Mamie one would be it. It would be perfect for her. I've but seen mm -hmm. her stand in front of the vault and, and covet those clothes. <laughs> yes, but unfortunately, you know, can't maybe, have them. You know, can't have them. Maybe can't clothes can only them. go on display. We can't yeah. wear them. So. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, it's a great opportunity to be here today. I, I, I'd like to do another show um, when Sam gets it scheduled for us to talk about uh, some of the things that you found, Pam, about Mimi. Mm -hmm. How interesting. Uh, and there, there has to be more material. Oh, Tons. There okay. are um, thousands of pages in, in collections. Uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I think uh, the relevancy that we try to present to the camera would be a great thing to present the balance side mm -hmm. of the relationship. We just shot a program for when people are viewing this, would have been last month's program where Eisenhower talked about balance in the world is key mm -hmm. to the world staying successful. Well, mm -hmm. balance in the White House and balance in any house is key to uh, being successful there too. And they were a great example for all of us to follow. Absolutely. Okay, we have two minutes left. Okay. Uh, I don't know that we talked about the beautiful little cup. If you did. Yeah, I, I did just mention okay. that that was uh, uh, Icky's baby cup. Oh, that's so. his baby cup, mm -hmm. that's right. Okay, so <clears throat> yes. it's a baby cup. Mm -hmm. And um, uh, none of my kids' baby cups looks like that. <laughs> <laughs> a little no. sippy thing on yeah, it. Yes, exactly. <laughs> okay. And uh, the one thing we didn't cover is uh, it looks like a gift from a small child to Mamie. Yes, yes the, uh, their granddaughter Susie uh, drew Mamie a picture. It says to Mimi. That was their name for her instead of Grandma. Um, it says uh, to Mimi from Susie. And uh, it's a picture she drew with and put some pussy willows, pussy willows on, on it. On it. Mm -hmm. And it says, uh, Pussy willows come in the spring or in right. April or something like in the that. Spring. It says on the front. <laughs> yeah. And there's a bonus picture on the back for there those of you at home. Mm -hmm. it must have been the, the first draft. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, what a what a cool thing! I don't know about the rest of you, but I have things like this stuffed in my drawers around the house, and occasionally I come upon them, and they they bring 
warm memories and fond thoughts of the, of the event. And what a, what a great thing it is that we have the Eisenhower Presidential Library here to hold things like this, give people connection to their past, and what a great first family. Absolutely. Okay. Mm -hmm. William, Pam, thanks for having me today. Thanks for Thank making you. Thank you. this opportunity available to our viewers at home. Why like Ike? Oh, it's a great thing. Come join us here at the Eisenhower Presidential Library Museum. Wonderful artifacts, wonderful stories, wonderful people. Looking for you here and hoping you have a great day.